Chillingham Castle on the windswept moors of northern England is a monument to just how dark the Dark Ages could be. There's hardly been a renovation since the 1200s that hasn't uncovered at least one twisted, haunting skeleton. The history of Chillingham Castle has been written in blood, and so, the legend goes, there are many restless spirits here with unfinished business. It's not a feeling that there's somebody there. It's a feeling that you're not alone, which is slightly different. I've never seen any ghost, but you don't have to see a thing to believe. You can know a thing is there without seeing it. This cold and imposing edifice on the border between England and Scotland is Chillingham Castle. Built by the descendants of William the Conqueror, the castle is inextricably bound to the warfare, torture, and murderous passion of British history. In a letter dated 1520, even the mighty Spanish Armada is warned to stay away from Chillingham or come prepared to fight to the death. The family crest reflects the dark and dangerous forces that are the legacy of Chillingham. The Wakefield bat flies over the castle, and real bats fly around within. And even the present-day owner, Sir Humphrey Wakefield, admits there is an air of evil here. The atmosphere is right for ghosts, in a way. To me, it would be much more extraordinary to have no spirits floating around here after all the excitement and the horror and the glory and the glamour and the history and the heartache that's been here sort of undisturbed. The castle staff have grown accustomed to the eerie atmosphere of an 800-year-old castle complete with dungeons and torture chambers. There's quite a lot of eerie places, quite a lot of places that have a funny feel about them. And there's many times you get a certain feeling in a certain part that you, there's somebody behind you or there's somebody there. These are the skeletons in Chillingham's closet, the real remains of countless enemies who endured torture so unspeakable that the screams of prisoners begging for death could be heard throughout the castle. This dungeon was called the Oubliette, from the French word for forgotten, because that is precisely what happened to prisoners who marked their final days here. At Chillingham Castle, there certainly was torture within the walls. And the main one really was if they were taken prisoner for information, in which case they would be taken into the dungeon above the oubliette. Then they lifted the lid of the oubliette and threw them down. They'd fall onto dead bodies that had been there for a while. They knew that an oubliette was to forget so they were forgotten about. They got neither food nor water, and they were left to starve to death. Tony Cornell is the UK's preeminent ghost investigator and has spent more than 30 years trying to develop the study of spiritual contact into a bona fide science. Sightings asked Cornell to inspect Chillingham for hard evidence of paranormal activity. As for Chillingham, is it haunted? Good question. I don't think there's any doubt whatever. Yes, it is very haunted. In over 800 investigations, Cornell has searched for scientific methods to quantify decidedly unscientific phenomena. And I think that the scientist's attitude that it's rubbish, which a lot of them think it is, is a very unscientific attitude. If you take the kind of thing we're investigating, uh, apparitions, ghosts, that is, it's been going on pretty well since recorded history. Cornell began his survey with a search for Lady Grey, her haunting presence has been reportedly felt for more than a century in halls, towers, and stairways throughout the castle. She was married to this very able but curious fellow who went off and had a fling with his sister-in-law, who was very pretty. The sister-in-law was called Lady Henrietta Barclay. Uh, poor old Lady Grey was devastated by her husband running off like that. And throughout the centuries, she famously climbed out of that painting wandered up and down the stairs, moaning and crying and wringing our hands and looking for her husband. I think I've heard the footsteps of Lady Mary about three times in different parts of the castle. And you can hear uh, it's a, a fairly heavy female footstep. Uh, it's not a very dainty little one, but definitely female and not male and it's accompanied by the swish 
of material, which I'm very sure is taffeta. Cornell also searched for evidence of the ghostly child known as the Radiant Boy. Childish laughter has been heard, and a child bathed in ethereal blue light has been sighted here by residents and staff. In the pink room, the temperature used to drop, and then a bright light started to build up in one corner beside the fireplace. And in the center of the light, you start to make out the, the shape of a boy. And uh, he, he was dressed in period uh, garments in sort of a, apparently a blue, silky uh, type of material with knee breeches. And all he did, he just walked across the room and went through the wall. Photographing a ghost here should be like shooting fish in a barrel, but Sir Humphrey has no such illusions. It's quite difficult to get Chillingham Castle uh, ghosts to perform when an expert is there, because normally I think the spirits shy off and say, we don't want to play games. Cornell knows that ghosts don't perform on demand, but he's prepared in case one does during his overnight vigil. What we want to do is get it on record, get it on other instrumentation, now, I'll surround myself with equipment. I'll use uh, a tape recorder in case there's any footsteps or sound. I'll use a video camera, which will be switched on by infrared if there's any interference with the infrared. What I want to do is find out whether there are any cold spots, so I've got to measure the rapid changes of temperature. I shall also try and use some form of electrical detection because the ghosts may be generated by some form of electrical disturbance. And the whole idea is to put it on record. was only preliminary, more of a fact-finding mission than a ghost hunt. Cornell now believes it will take much more equipment and an army of volunteers to ferret out the restless spirits of Chillingham Castle. There's no doubt in my mind that this castle's got a lot of genuine hauntings and spirits and ghosts, whatever you want to call them. And I think what we've got to do is come back, spend more time, and see if we can get uh, more positive readings. But I'm absolutely convinced that this castle is worthwhile investigating. Because of the castle's isolated location, the sightings investigative team was invited to stay at Chillingham overnight. Even though the hospitality was impeccable, and our team had investigated dozens of haunted sites just like this one, each member reported feeling very uneasy at Chillingham, unable to sleep, and more than a little relieved when the investigation was over. 